What's going on guys? This is Brian from Advancement Hockey Advising and today we'll be talking about ACHA, what it is, and if it's worth it for you. And before we dive into things here, just a quick reminder to smash that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and share the video if you like the content. And as always, if you want to reach out to us about anything, if you have any questions whatsoever, feel free to comment down below or email us at info at ahadvising.com and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. And last quick thing, there are timestamps throughout the video. So if you want to go click those, you can. If you want to just watch the entire video, that's fine too. It's completely up to you. All right, so why are we making this video here? Why are we talking about ACHA? Well, the biggest reason is that ACHA is a little bit fuzzy and unknown to a lot of us. I know that a lot of people like to focus on NCAA and rightfully so, but ACHA does deserve a video of its own here and does, you know, it is a good option for some hockey players. So I think it's worth here talking about it. We're shedding some light on it, you know, kind of eliminating all these misconceptions and helping you guys get a better understanding as to what it is, you know, if it's worth it for you and, you know, what players benefit from, you know, pursuing this option. So what is ACHA? Well, let's start with what it stands for here. So basically it stands for American Collegiate Hockey Association. And basically the name here kind of gives it away. It's basically another collegiate avenue that in the US that players can pursue uh, aside from NCAA. So it's just another path that you can go to in the US at the collegiate level. And to make things very simple for you guys, ACHA is basically a good step down from NCAA hockey. So basically the general ranking kind of goes like this. You got NCAA D1 at the top, and then you got NCAA D3 and NCAA D2 that plays with the D3, all right, for hockey. And then after that, you got ACHA D1, ACHA D2, and then ACHA D3. That's how the general ranking goes. Now, I want you to keep in mind here that these are very general guidelines. Yes, that's how they're generally ranked, but like we've said in past videos, that doesn't mean that a team in a lower ranked division or league can't beat a team in a higher ranked division, right? They're general guidelines, so it keeps things general. Generally, most teams in a higher division will beat most teams in the lower division, but you know, it varies here and there, right? So for example, uh, programs in ACHA like Lindenwood, Adrian, Liberty, all of these programs are very, very elite programs. They have great facilities, great hockey players there. And a lot of them could, you know, give good competition to a lot of NCAA D3 programs and would beat some NCAA D3 programs uh, more often than not on any given night. So, you know, it really varies here, but in general, it goes NCAA D1, NCAA D3, ACHA D1, ACHA D2, and then ACHA D3 afterwards. So moving on here, when should you consider ACHA? When is it worth it for you? And this is a reasonable question to ask because I know a lot of players that want to go the collegiate route, a lot of them dream of NCAA Division One, and that's great. It's okay to have those goals and dreams. That being said, the reality is not every player goes NCAA Division One hockey, right? And also not every player goes NCAA Division Three hockey. It is very, very competitive to make uh, an NCAA team. So that being said, it is worth considering ACHA hockey. Well, here we're gonna give you a list of options or a list of different situations that might apply to you. And obviously these are gonna be very general. So again, you know, everyone's situation is different. Don't form opinions just on this video, but we kind of want to just give general guidelines here to kind of start to get you to get an idea of, you know, when should I consider ACHA hockey? So first and foremost, like any collegiate path that we recommend here, you must value academics and you must want to go the collegiate path. If you don't care about academics whatsoever, collegiate hockey is not the right path for you. Let me tell you that it's going to be more expensive, first of all. And second of all, you're not going to do anyone any favors yourself, the coaching staff at that you know institution, your parents, no one is going to benefit from this in the long term. So your best not to go down this road. You really have to value academics first and foremost before, you know, considering NCAA U sports or ACHA hockey. All right. So second scenario here is if you're a really good hockey player in high school and you play AAA, whatever, prep hockey, anything like that, but you didn't really get any early NCAA commitments, or let's say you did even get interest, but you just don't feel like playing junior hockey for a, a year, two years, or even three years, right? You don't feel like going through that whole process. You kind of want to go to school right away. You know, some players, I, I know some players that have done this, have, that have gone straight to school. Some do, rare exceptions, manage to get you know, NCAA commitments doing this, but these are the exceptions, you know, not the rule. 
most players that do go straight from you know high school and want to play collegiate hockey most of them if they want to continue doing this they go on the acha path and that's totally fine you know everybody values hockey differently you know if you want to do this straight from high school go the collegiate route considering acha if you want to keep playing hockey in college is a great great option for you so in that case i would say acha hockey is a great thing to consider Third option here, you're a really good player, you have junior hockey experience, you have NCAA, you know, D3 offers at your disposal that you can commit to. However, an ACHA program or several ACHA programs come out and they give you great financial deals and, and your parents, you know, are maybe a little bit tight on money, you get great financial deals at these institutions and NCAA programs cost uh, a lot more. You know, for example, let's say, I don't know, Liberty comes and offers you, uh, you know, maybe eight to $10,000 a year, everything included. Whereas the lowest NCAA D3 offer is $25,000 or even higher, uh, everything included. You know, at this point, some players will go ahead and choose the NCAA option anyways. That being said though, I think the smartest option in this case would probably go with the, the Liberty option, the cheaper option, right, for your parents. But obviously everyone's situation is different. Some people will choose the NCAA instead. It's totally up to you at this point, but I do know a lot of players that, you know, didn't go the NCAA path because of finances. If this applies to you, you know, this is totally a good option to take, uh, like instead of going the NCAA path. Going ACHA in this case really does make sense. So scenario number four here, and this one's kind of related to the previous scenario we just discussed, and that's if you do have some NCAA D3 offers, but they're kind of on the lower end, you know, the program's not great or anything like that. And then you have one like Liberty, or you have one like Adrian that offers you an ACHA D1 position, and the program's just more solid you know it's just a better hockey program you know let's say the school you know has the exact major you want or something like that's just a better fit in that case if the acha program is a better fit than the lower end ncaa programs you're looking at i would say you know going acha is something worth considering and it would be worth it i think in my opinion to go uh, the acha route instead of the ncaa route in this case and scenario number five here is if you played junior hockey you know you did decently well but you really didn't get any ncaa you know d3 offers unfortunately you know you didn't get any ncaa interest really you didn't get anything solid whereas but you do have some acha interest you know you do have acha programs some pretty good programs that are interested in you you know at this point if you want to keep playing hockey and be a student athlete i say acha is a no-brainer you know go to a good program where they still take it seriously i think it still makes sense to go in that case if you know the whole institution and everything like that is the right fit you know i think it does make sense to consider acha in this case so we got to cover some options here but of course this isn't an exhaustive list by any means right there's you know different scenarios that might be similar to the ones we mentioned or some that are completely unique to you to your specific circumstances and that's completely fine right but remember these are general guidelines which means that for your specific scenarios here and situations you have to seek out expert advice that's catered to you you know talk to your coach talk to other coaches talk to scouts talk to advisors you know you can reach out to us if you want to just make sure you get multiple opinions before you make a decision because this is <clears throat> a big decision right acha is good for some players but it's not right for everybody so it's important to ask around and to weigh all your options before making a decision here all right so let's just do a quick recap here of the main points of the video so acha is essentially another collegiate route that hockey players can pursue and it's collegiate in the u.s and generally it's ranked below ncaa hockey so that's pretty much it for the video. But before we let you go, there's just a quick reminder again to smash that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and share the video if you like the content. And again, if you have any questions about anything, if you want to reach out to us about anything related to ACHA or anything else related to hockey, feel free to drop a comment down below or email us at info at ahadvising.com and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. And if you want to check us out on any of our other platforms, there's a link down in the description below that you can click. It'll give you access to our Facebook, Instagram, you know, LinkedIn, our website, everything else that we're up to, essentially, you'll get access to that. And that's it, guys. Thanks so much for watching. We hope you enjoyed the video, and we'll catch you on that next one.